30 years ago, Kathleen McCartney Hurst won the race that put the Ironman on the map. But the post-race chatter focused not on the champion, but the courage of runner-up Julie Moss. Julie Moss's finish was something America and the world had never seen before. In 2011, Kathleen brought some focus back to her own life and decided she needed another Kona Ironman. She also realized that Kona would be incomplete without her former adversary. Well, I have to give credit to Kathleen McCartney Hurst for getting in touch with me, telling me she had specific reasons for being here. And I said, great, not interested in going back, but I'll support you on the journey. I really wasn't gonna let up until she said yes. Once she decided to do the race, we are gonna do this as training partners. We were competitors in 1982. We're collaborators in 2012. It's really not about how we finish against each other. It's how we finish together. And this journey has been together. It's really a dream. This has been an Iron Man dream. Sunset doesn't mean the end of the day, not even close. For hundreds of athletes in the field, including Ironman legend Julie Moss and Kathleen McCartney, there is a long road ahead and a midnight deadline looming. I'll see you at the finish line if you don't catch me. Okay. One extraordinary <coughs> dream was the start of our Ironman journey that has spanned over 30 years in over 30 Ironman mm -hmm. triathlons between us. Now, we're not mm -hmm. here to talk you into doing an Ironman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So we're here to focus on what you can do to achieve your personal victories that, I don't know, until now may have seemed beyond your reach. Now, I've never been a competitive athlete of any kind. And the thought of swimming 2.4 miles, cycling 112 miles, and running 26.2 miles sounds impossible. Yes. <laughs> Just moments before the start of the Ironman, the ABC helicopters are buzzing overhead, and the energy is electric. At exactly 7 o'clock in the morning, the cannon explodes with a mammoth blast. And in one moment, one booming moment, my Iron Man dream is born. I decided I wanted to be an Iron Man finisher. One moment changed my life. You may be just one single dream, one first step away from changing your life. Okay, unlike Kathleen, <laughs> zero game plan, zero support network, and zero idea of how to go from the dream of being an Iron Man to actually becoming one. With that, I then kind of massaged that information and said to my mother, my, my advisor said I must do this event to graduate. <laughs> And you'll have to pay for three weeks in Hawaii. <laughs> a few weeks later, I'm boarding the plane for Hawaii, and I'm armed with my two biggest assets, a great attitude, <laughs> and a now or never sense of commitment. And when I get off the plane there in Kona, I'm embraced by the Ironman community. I am surrounded by hundreds of triathletes. Yeah, not a bad place to be. <laughs> February 6th, 4 a.m., the alarm goes off. It's race morning. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I walk out onto the lanai to hear the ocean roar and smell the salt air. The full moon is reflecting on the water. So I take a moment to reflect, take a deep breath, close my eyes, and I think, I am not the same girl that landed on this island a few weeks ago. I'm stronger. I'm more confident, and now, most importantly, I believe I can get to the finish line. The volunteers mark a number 290 on my body, and I'm thinking, is this to ID the bodies? <laughs> <laughs> I head down the steps to the start line area, and as I head down the steps, I look over at the exact spot where just last year I was a spectator standing on the seawall supporting someone else's dreams. It was the most exhilarating moment of my life. <laughs> then I looked down at my watch and get a split. Eight minutes down, eight miles to go. 
With every minute that I chip into the lead, my confidence is growing. I feel like if I can keep to my game plan, if I can keep this up, I can catch Julie. I started the morning believing I could finish the race, but leading the race, being in first place, okay, I understood that pressure from down on the pier in the morning. This was a dream. Winning was something I could never have imagined. But with every passing mile, I'm getting pretty attached to this new idea. The only thing I could think about was, I have to go as fast as I can because I want this. This race has split me open, and what I've discovered is this new core belief in my self-worth. And my self-worth is worth fighting for. And I'm willing to suffer to know I can be good at something. I think I'm giving it everything I have, but I find more. The entire day I found more, more determination, more will, more positive energy, more belief in my dream. I start sprinting to the finish line, a medal is placed around my neck. Then I have to ask, am I first? <laughs> In a split second, my complete shock turns into unbridled joy. Yes, I am the Iron Man champion. Yeah. Our dream to become Iron Man finishers was ignited when we witnessed something powerful in others that we wanted to experience for ourselves. I felt compelled to take that risk, to accomplish something I never thought I was capable of. I wasn't content to sit on the sidelines anymore. I was ready to risk going for a dream of my own. Iron Man changed my life. I needed Iron Man to change my life again. Immediately, I thought of Julie. Who knew better than Julie how to get up, how to get to the finish line, <laughs> even when you have to crawl? As fate would have it, the 2012 Iron Man was on was the 30th anniversary of our defining race. And the thought of Julie and I together in Kona would Come, we bring us full circle. So I picked up the phone and I called my former rival. And I knew exactly why she wanted to go back to Kona. Kona is where she was crowned a champion and she needed to feel like a champion again. And I was delighted that we were starting this new friendship. We bonded pretty instantly. But the idea of committing to her to go back to Kona, ooh. <laughs> that was a stretch. <laughs> This Iron Man journey was an opportunity for two former rivals to join forces, combine our individual strengths, and be stronger together. We discovered that the power of us brings out the best in each other. From the darkness of the Queen K Highway, I'm running the final miles of the marathon. And off in the distance, I see the bright glow of the finish area. And it so perfectly symbolized my journey. Julie inspired me to get up. She inspired me to believe in an Ironman dream. And my day, my journey would not have been complete without her. So just understand, look for your rivals, look for the best in everybody, and find a way to come together. Great things can happen. But by refusing to give up on my best self, I want a life-changing personal victory. Okay, here's the good news. You don't have to be an Iron Man to access your inner strength and uncap the limits of your potential. But you do have to dream. The only person that limits oneself is, is you. You're the only person who's doing that. And you have no idea what you're capable of. So keep stretching. Lean into your fear. Don't shrink back from it, just lean. The kind of dreams that ignite your heart, the kind of dreams that make your imagination soar, the kind of dreams that give you a gut reaction, and yes, the kind of dreams that scare you. And then you have to take action. You have to 
You have to commit, you have to believe, and you have to never give up to turn your big dreams and challenges into your personal victories. 30 years ago, Julie Moss crawled across the finish line. Tonight, she finishes on her feet and on her terms. She now waits at the finish for her training partner and friend, and they are both an inspiration to all.